For the first time in four decades, the U.S. Army unveiled a wholly new armored fighting vehicle, the M10 Booker. It has a fully traversable turret. It is armed with a 105 millimeter main gun. Some Army officials have called it a new light tank. But many say the mission and protection of the Booker is very different from a tank. Here's how it compares to tanks like the Abrams, which the U.S. is sending to Ukraine, and why the Army has invested more than $1 billion to equip itself with this new vehicle. The Booker looks very similar to the Abrams. Both are fully tracked vehicles with a four-person crew, 360-degree turret, large-caliber main gun, and a commander's independent thermal viewer that allows visibility at night and in multiple directions. But the Booker is just over half the weight of the latest Abrams tank. The battlefield role for the M10 will be to support deployed infantry forces. The Booker basically gives you armor support that you would not have otherwise had. It can carry a wider variety of munitions. It can go places that an up-armored Humvee can't go. Tracked vehicles distribute weight more effectively for better off-road performance, and the Booker's road wheels are even lighter than previous tracked vehicles of a similar size. This allows it to move easily to and around the battlefield, a common choke point for heavier tanks like the Abrams. There will be bridges, for example, that could support a Booker, but not support an Abrams. It also means the Booker can be deployed by aircraft relatively easily. Rotate. For the 31 M1A1 Abrams promised to Ukraine, delivery could be one of the biggest challenges. Only one Abrams can fit inside this C-17 Globemaster compared to two Bookers. But in order to get a vehicle in this weight class, the Army had to be more strategic about the level of armor. Just look at the turret on the Booker compared to the Abrams. You can see from the roof on the turret in particular is actually armor. The turret connects the gun to the main body of the vehicle. The turret front is usually thought to be the part of the vehicle that is most likely to be hit by an enemy. Abrams' turret is very well protected. Booker's turret is probably fairly well protected, but the expectation is not there that it would be as survivable as Abrams. Even with less protection, the Booker does bring new capabilities to infantry forces with its main gun, a nearly 105 millimeter cannon. That's smaller than the Abrams 120 mm main gun, but more powerful than the 25 mm cannon on the M2 Bradley. It gives you the flexibility of firing projectiles that are specifically designed to penetrate armor. And the Booker also comes equipped with a highly accurate targeting system. Essentially on each of these vehicles, you have a computer. That computer can be used to detect the range to the target using a laser, and it can calculate where to fire the gun to hit a target, including if it's moving and including if you're moving. But less armor might also explain a key difference between the two, engine placement. In the case of the Booker, that would mean that the engine sits in front of the crew and potentially provides additional protection to them. So if the vehicle is hit from the front, then there is a chance that the crew would be more likely to survive a hit. Abrams simply just has a great deal of front armor. It balances it by having the engine at the back. Compared to the Abrams gas turbine engine. Burning like 12 gallons of fuel an hour just to be turned on. The Booker's 800 horsepower diesel engine is meant to extend the fuel time for a full 24 hours. When the vehicle is idling, it will burn much less fuel. All of these factors, weight, armor, main gun, and engine, play into how the two differ in deployment. The Booker is not necessarily designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an enemy's heavy armor. Top-tier main battle tanks, adversary armored vehicles, are not what you would want a Booker for. This is why we have Abrams and the Armored Brigade Combat Team. The Armored Brigade Combat Team is considered a heavy force. The Booker, on the other hand, is meant to work with the ground troops, or the Infantry Brigade Combat Team. Military experts say this team is designed for quick deployment and is able to operate in highly restrictive terrain like jungles, forests, mountains, and cities. The advantage of infantry is that they can go lots of places. They have lots of ability to see things. They can sneak around more effectively. If you are fighting in an environment that has very difficult terrain, they can then communicate where the most dangerous targets are to your tank. And the crew members operating this vehicle will find it rather familiar because both the Booker and the Abrams are made by the same company, General Dynamics Land Systems, so they do share some features in helpful ways. 
we're told that they have similar controls for the crew members. These shared characteristics will allow for more seamless training. It will be very familiar to tankers who will basically use similar crew drill. And both the Booker and the Abrams have compartmentalized ammunition, which is a design intended to protect the crew if the ammunition explodes. This is what helps these vehicles avoid the jack-in-the-box explosion seen with many Russian tanks during the war in Ukraine, where ammunition stored around the turret exploded, likely killing the crew and causing the turret to fly off. But the arrival of the Booker comes at a time when new challenges have arisen for tanks and combat vehicles alike. Modern armored vehicles can be attacked from literally any direction. Right now in Ukraine, vehicles are worrying about artillery and drones that might attack the top of a vehicle. They have to deal with mines that would attack the bottom of a vehicle. And of course, direct fire threats can come from any direction. The Army grew interested in building a vehicle like the Booker just years after Russia's annexation of Crimea, with experts noting the need for more mobile protected firepower in light of modern Russian warfare. But actually making the Booker a reality hasn't been cheap. Last summer, General Dynamics was contracted for the production and fielding of nearly 100 vehicles in a $1.14 billion deal, before extending the contract to include an additional 26 vehicles and adding another $258 million. But the vehicle has run into issues. Early tests found high levels of toxic fumes when firing the main gun. The Army has pretty high expectations of how ready a vehicle should be when it reaches soldiers. If there's any issue with soldier safety, problem with the fumes from the main gun, which they actually have dealt with, according to the office that works the acquisition on this, they'll have to deal with that before they can green light production. The first unit of M10 Bookers is expected toward the end of 2025. Each of those systems is expected to cost around $13 million, with plans for the cost to go down as production increases. This price doesn't perfectly compare to the estimated $10 million Abrams because unlike the Abrams, the Booker is a new build. The difference between the newest version of Abrams and the original version of Abrams is night and day. Abrams literally got a gun upgrade, a different main gun installed when it went from the M1 to the M1A1. But this first iteration of the Booker fills an important gap in the Army's capabilities and is intended to serve as a long-term solution. When this thing is fielded, there will almost certainly be then subsequent changes. You give a vehicle like this to a bunch of soldiers and they will find ways to break it that you need to fix and they will find things to improve about it that will then go back up through the army and ultimately hopefully turn into a Booker A2 that is a, a better version.